So this is a supercharger cover, full billet piece, um, doing these areas in cream soda blue, and then this area and all these will be in a black color. It's actually, I think, Prismatic Cosmos, if I remember correctly. So first thing first, I'm gonna deburr all of these. Pretty crazy from the machine process. So I'm just gonna hit those with a DA and then this will go in for sandblasting to get it ready. Now that we got a photo of this, pull the tape off. You don't need to mark it anymore. That way, it can go in for blasting, which will be the next step. So I thought I'd show you guys the masking process for this. I didn't mask the entire thing on the bottom. I just masked the flanges, so if I slid it around on metal or anything, it wouldn't mar the flanges. And then I also masked the little posts that stick down because there's holes in those. Then uh, bring it over to the scat blast cabinet for blasting. Put it face down, throw on the glass on the top of it. That was kind of the reason for the masking. And guys, if you haven't gone to a pop feed on your blasting cabinet, you are wasting not only time, but effort. Uh, it's literally the best thing ever. Also doing an LED conversion inside your cabinet. Uh, it's focusing on the glass right now, but it makes it a billion times better inside, I promise. So looking at my notes here, it looks like it took me about four minutes to blast this thing. Uh, it is just bare billet aluminum, obviously. Still blasting with green diamond. Uh, the camera keeps refocusing, so sorry about that. All right, got the thing all blasted. Got the masking tape off. Just again, all that's just to really to protect all of this. So everything's blasted and blown off, gonna go ahead and give it a good wipe down, make sure there's no random dust or anything in here before I start the masking process to get it ready for powder. And for the masking, I decided to go ahead and use blue tape. Uh, probably would have got away with green tape on this, being that it's like a perfect flat surface. Uh, just gonna do a lot of recoating on this, like multiple coats, so I didn't want the green tape to lift on any edges. So, got this thing all hung up, uh, taped obviously, but I wanted to go over something, and it's about uh, thinking about how you're gonna hang something, and then if you might need to rotate it at any point. Um, so as you can see, I cut out this hole and this hole to hang it from initially, because this is the easiest spot uh, to hang it from, so I had the most access for wiping and things. Uh, throughout this process, but then if you see I also did this one this one This one this one this one and this one and what that's gonna allow me to do is rotate this if I need to rotate it on hooks um, And keep it hung up now There's a chance that I could set it down on its backside because it is fully taped so I don't have to worry about it um, But we're gonna spray this color first uh, cream soda blue do the you know partial cure on it and then work from there. We might just leave it like this and never have to rotate it, but just a, a little tip. You know, if you have extra places to hang it from, it's never a bad thing. And we are using the Optiflex 2B, already on program one. There's the settings, since everybody always asks me. Actually, there's the settings, since everybody always asks me. Booth on and start making the passes on the outside first. Always on the outside first. Hard to reach corners first. Work it around. So because we're gonna be doing a wipe on this and we don't care if we get powder into the machined areas here on the edges or these circle ones, we don't have to worry about getting this powder in there either because this is just the first coat of blue and in those areas is all gonna be black like I said earlier. It's uh, 
Prismatic Cosmos, I believe. Alright, got this thing fully coated. Check, make sure it's all good. You know, it's always grab an LED flashlight. Keep one right here by the booth. Not really gonna have to worry about coverage on this. Once again, not coating inside there or there. So that doesn't really matter. We'll go throw this thing in the oven. So now that we got the blue, you know, partially cured, obviously, uh, we still have to do the prismatic cosmos, and that's going to be going here uh, in these machined areas and on these machined fins that go all the way around the outside of this. There's obviously the four circles in the center and then the ridges all the way around. So we load up prismatic cosmos. Uh, I admit I did not show my settings on this. I meant to do it. I made a note about doing it and still didn't do it. Um, when I'm spraying the second color, I only worry about spraying powder in the areas that I'm going to have to, you know, make sure are covered. Because a lot of this is going to be wiped down or vacuumed in this case. Obviously, I start here with the vacuum and start sucking up most of the excess. Uh, admittedly, this vacuum isn't ideal. Um, I've lo actually looked at getting some of the vacuum kits and stuff. I even reached out to a couple of the places that make them um, about, you know, bringing one into the channel. And honestly, I didn't get a great response from any of them. So um, I've just used this one. I actually modified a pen for the end of this hose, and it's actually worked really great. And for this particular task, it worked like, absolutely perfect. I couldn't have asked for a better tool to actually do this particular job. Um, I know that there's lots of those vacuum kits out there, and I know lots of people really like them. Uh, so if you're one of the places that manufactures those and you want to see it on this channel, let me know. Uh, you can hit me up. My email is in the description of this video. So as you can see here, and I'm going to kind of move the camera around to kind of show you guys as best I can. I vacuum away almost all of the excess, leaving all of the areas that are, you know, right up against the edge of where I'm going to need powder. Um, I leave powder there. Don't worry about those edges being too clean because I'm going to go through and wipe all those to make them clean. I'm just trying to get all the extra powder off so it doesn't end up in the way. And one thing to remember when you're doing this with the wiping process, you want to be trying to wipe powder down away from whatever you're working on. So you always start at the top and be like pushing it down. Obviously, let gravity do some of the work for you. Um, plus, you don't want to be wiping lower parts and then, you know, brushing away stuff at the top as you work and then just knocks it down on the parts you, you know, have already done. So you're going to go through, cut all these lines, uh, you know, a finger... And just like a wet towel works great. Um, you can go back in and do any of the vacuuming or anything on these edges. For example, like I just flat missed. Um, once again, it, the more that you remove in the vacuum process, the less you will have to wipe off, obviously. And, you know, trying to wipe it off when it's on there like thick, like you just coated it, is an absolute nightmare. So this is where the vacuum really comes into play. Another little pro tip here is I'm actually vacuuming the back side where all the tape is, and this is so that when I put it in the oven, there's not extra powder to, like, blow around, so to speak. Uh, just a little extra pro tip. Um, this is where I moved into, you know, this pen that I was describing earlier. is literally a pen with the little ink part taken out, and it allows me to do really fine detail work. And the angle that this pen tip is cut at, or maybe all pen tips are cut out, I have no idea, made it absolutely perfect to go into these little, like, fluted, slotted areas on the side of this. Um, I was super stoked that it fit in there. It allowed me to, like, you know, cut this perfect groove in all this powder. And as you can see here, I did end up rotating this, like I described at the beginning of this video. Uh, just made it easier to get into some of the little areas and make sure that I got powder off of all these tight edges, um, especially, you know, as you rotate it, you know, whatever would be the top, you'll end up every time you rotate it, it seems like there's a little bit more powder pops up, so. And with Prismatic Cosmos, I tend to do a little bit more than just a flow out. I'll do like, uh, you know, get it to full temperature and give it a couple minutes. It seems like with Prismatic Cosmos and some of these other ones that when you don't cure them long enough and you clear them, the clear messes with the flake. So uh, this is Tiger's Bengal Clear. 
going on and here it is uh finished this is after final cure and everything's done this is uh, right before packaging for the customer um my phone's gonna have a hard time trying to focus on this color uh it seems like it does it every single time but prismatic cosmos is just a you know rainbow prismatic flake a lot of you guys have obviously seen it before it's similar to you know kachow or uh, prismatic universe some of those or unicorn pussy if you know that one um but the part came out absolutely perfect was absolutely in love with how it turned out, and the customer, of course, loved it. Um, this is not a color combination that I necessarily ever would have thought of, and so when the customer brought it up to me, I wasn't a hundred percent on board with it. Um, but seeing the, you know, finished product, it definitely made me appreciate this color combination a lot more. Um, there, you can kind of see the rainbow prismatic effect, and of course, the metallic that's in this blue as well. Um, as you can see, no extra black or prismatic cosmos hanging out on any of the blue. Um, this thing turned out, you know, absolutely perfect. And the guy already wants to get more of these parts done or more parts done in this same color combination for his setup. And before I end this video off, I did want to show the back of this to show how perfect and clean the backside is even after coating, um, you know, made sure that in the masking process, none of that tape lifted. There was no weird gaps in any of the tape. And, uh, yeah, that's that. And if you guys made it to the end of this video, I just want to say thanks for watching. And if you are interested in powder coating or powder coating content, make sure you hit that subscribe button, uh, hit the like button below. It definitely helps out the algorithm and gets our videos in front of more people. Um, got a ton of videos coming up. I uh, thought I'd show you guys a little sneak peek of the new booth and new oven uh, that I just assembled and threw into the shop. So, Oh, and before I forget, the UKC Army page on Facebook. Uh, if you're a powder coder, once again, just interested in powder coating, make sure you join that group. Lots of helpful people in there. If you got questions or anything, definitely post in there and you'll find help uh, pretty much right away from everything I can see. See you next time.